Miles Bridges finished last season on an absolute tear. After spending a majority of the year coming off the bench and having entered the All-Star break averaging just 10 points per game, he went nuts over his last 19 outings, the majority of which he started, dropping over 20 points a night on roughly 52-44-83 splits. He looked fearless, busting out step backs regularly, dunking all over people, and producing at a high volume very efficiently. Once we saw him do that, we should have known what was coming this year. Through six games, Bridges has been one of the stories of the NBA season, having averaged 25 and a half points and eight rebounds per game on 51% shooting for a Hornets team that has been a top three offense in the NBA. Given how strong he finished last year, I said before this season even started that I regretted not picking Bridges as one of my top three candidates for most improved player, and that I thought he was clearly among the top tier of front runners for that award. But now, he might be the favorite. So, how has he gotten this good this fast? Because, I mean, Bridges was a two-year star for one of college basketball's blue blood programs at Michigan State. Not exactly the profile of somebody who slips through the cracks. Yet he went 12th in the draft. Through two seasons in the NBA, he was a solid, all-around player, a gifted athlete, but a middling shooter. And now, one year later, he looks like an actual star, at least as a pure scorer. So again, what is it that now makes Bridges special? Well, what I find most remarkable about him is the sheer variety of ways in which he can score. Perhaps the deadliest aspect of Bridges' game is his prowess as a transition force. He's currently averaging five transition points per game, the 12th best mark in the NBA, and he's done so on 77th percentile efficiency. Bridges has a pretty ideal skill set for transition. At 6'6", he's an explosive athlete running full court and is among the league's best leapers, having demonstrated a 42-inch vertical at the draft combine a few years ago. If you thought of Miles Bridges, especially before this season, you probably thought of his dunks, and for good reason. They are monstrous. And in transition, that means you can kind of throw the ball up from anywhere and he'll go get it. Luckily for Bridges, the Hornets love to push the tempo, having ranked 5th in pace this year, and he plays alongside one of the league's best transition playmakers in LaMelo Ball, so he gets fed streaking to the bucket there a whole lot. But, he can also push it himself. As a productive rebounder, Bridges is also a threat in grab-and-go situations, where he can again flash his end-to-end -end speed, and is very tough to stop with a head of steam as a powerful, aggressive athlete who loves contact and tends to win one-on-one -on -one matchups at the hoop. Although that skill set may shine most in transition, all those things also make Bridges a weapon in the half court. Driving to the cup, he may not have a super deep bag, but he's very effective. He's dominant as a straight line driver for the same reasons he excels in transition, his explosiveness and his strength, but he does have some skill getting downhill too. Bridges' handle could still get a little tighter, and at times he plays slightly out of control, but he doesn't need to have some next level handle because he's so athletic. He just needs to be pretty good there, which he definitely is. Bridges effectively uses hesitation dribbles, and he has an explosive crossover that can come out of nowhere, and once he pulls that one out, he's probably by you. He also has a nice spin move, and once he gets to the rim, he can bump you and finish through contact, and he can finish with either hand, having knocked down 72% of his attempts in the restricted area this year. Now, he doesn't have great touch as a finisher, I don't love it when he puts up contested runners, although he does have a decent little running hook type shot that he uses, but he can actually live with that limitation too. Bridges is so gifted athletically that he doesn't need shifty change in pace or outstanding touch to be effective as a driver. He can just physically dominate in a whole bunch of matchups and find success, especially given how much defenders have to respect him on the perimeter because of his shot, which is another major weapon in his game. Bridges is taking almost eight three-pointers a night this year, and he's hit better than 36% of them after he was 40% from downtown last year. As a catch-and-shooter, Bridges is exceptional, having knocked down 43.5% of his attempts off the catch thus far this year. That makes him a smooth piece to fit into any offense, but especially so on a Hornets team that has multiple creators who need significant time handling the ball, and it also allows him to attack closeouts effectively and get to the hoop. That's a really important skill set. But what I find even more impressive is Bridges' ability to create threes for himself whenever with his step back. Bridges has one of the nastiest step backs in basketball, period. 
At six foot six, he does a phenomenal job of maintaining his balance and he's proficient hopping both left and right. This year, he's hit six of 10 step back threes and last season, he made 59% of his step back triples. That is unthinkable efficiency on what is probably the single toughest shot in basketball. Now, last year, Bridges didn't attempt a whole ton of step backs, but again, it was one of the aspects that wowed me about his game when he did pull them out, and this year, he has been willing to let them fly. With that in his bag, Bridges can compensate for his underdeveloped in-between game or touch inside the arc, because if he gets you on an island, he can create space and get himself a good shot whenever, which is something only a few elite scorers in basketball can do. So on ball, he has his few bread and butter moves attacking from the perimeter, either getting downhill or pulling from deep, and they are damn effective. Off ball, Bridges consistently weaponizes his athleticism and can be very effective doing more big man type things. He's an explosive cutter where he ranked in the 78th percentile last year. You can plug him into the dunker spot for possessions and he can rise up quickly and catch lobs. And you can use him as a screener as he ranked in the 89th percentile as a role man last year and is, again, a fantastic vertical spacer. He also fights hard on the glass and snags two offensive boards per game, which he turns into more quick hitting, efficient offense through second chance points. So basically, he kind of fits anywhere. Bridges can strike rapidly from all over the court, off ball or on ball, in transition or in half court, and he is a tough cover. Put a smaller wing or a guard on Bridges, and he will simply overpower them, and he doesn't mind attacking them out of the post, either facing up or with his back to the basket, but line up a four against him, and he's often too quick and too good of a shooter for guys to stay in front of him. He's a freakish wing big hybrid piece and being able to produce in that many areas is truly a very rare thing. You can put him damn near anywhere and he'll make it work. He may not have the pure, refined skill of most guys scoring in the 20s night to night, but he compensates for that by playing hard, having outstanding athleticism, and being constantly aggressive. Overall, the impact of his skill set has been obvious. Right now, Bridges is scoring over 25 points per game on better than 62% true shooting, and although I think it's pretty safe to say that he probably won't sustain that for a full year, he's one of just seven guys doing it even at this point in the season, and only 18 players in NBA history have managed that feat over a full year. So, it's not a bad club to stop by in, even just for a cup of coffee. Additionally, the Hornets have been an absurd 13.8 points per 100 possessions better with Bridges on the floor. By far the best mark on the entire team, and yes, that's been over a very small sample size, but right now, it's just another reflection of the fact that the dude is excelling. And sure, most of that value does come from his scoring. Defensively, Bridges isn't exceptional, but he's solid. He's willing to step up and guard multiple positions, and he often competes hard on the interior, and he can make some big plays with his athletic gifts, having averaged 1.8 steals per game on the year. Plus, he'll do a pretty good job on the glass with his vertical ability and effort. He also isn't a super instinctive playmaker, although he was solid there in college and he has his moments, but he has a pretty clear score first mentality, as is reflected by his ratio of 18.7 shot attempts to 1.7 assists per game, and sure, that may limit his superstar ceiling or ability to actually command an offense, but that's okay. Charlotte has plenty of good ball movers and facilitators, and they don't need some dude who can step in and run a ton of pick and roll but they do benefit a whole lot from having a guy who can show up as a lead one-on-one -on -one bucket getter and score within the flow of the offense. And Bridges can fill both of those roles at a high level. So he may not stay this hot for a whole year, but we should absolutely expect Bridges to put up 20 to 22 points per game on efficient scoring as a key part of a very good offense. And that's a pretty remarkable thing to say about a guy who was averaging 10 points per game halfway into last season as a 22 year old. He's a versatile, fringe star level player who has taken a leap on a squad that seems poised to take a jump of its own. So keep your eyes on Bridges and the Hornets for the rest of this year, because these guys aren't just good, they are a whole lot of fun. To those of you who have made it this far, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, the good news is 
We have plenty more Nerd Sesh content and you can find it all on our new website, nerdsesh.com. There we have written content. I just wrote a piece yesterday on five standout NBA role players who deserve your attention. So go ahead and check out the website. You can also stick around here on our YouTube channel and see that we do video essays, video breakdowns like this about the NBA a lot. I try to do one every single week. You can also see that my friend Logan and I live stream our podcast here twice a week. You can also listen to all of our shows in audio format on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your audio content, and I will link that in the description. You can follow us on social media. Twitter is at nerd underscore sesh, and Instagram is at nerd sesh. And with that, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed.